Please pray with me, Father in heaven. What a journey we are on in this life. We pause from our busy lives to come here to worship you. We ask the Holy Spirit will open our ears and hearts to what you would say to us today. Amen. What a journey, huh? What a journey, huh, Les? Tell you, preaching three times on a Sabbath, what a journey. <laughs> Woo. I uh, actually woke up at 3.30 and my head started spinning. Is that a good story? Should I say that? Well, you know, it, it just spinning and spinning and spinning. So what a journey. What a journey we have been on in our, I'm, I'm now calling it our little hurricane. What a journey the people of Puerto Rico Dominica, St. Thomas, Barbuda are on. What a journey the people of Mexico are on. What a journey this whole world is on. As they say, can somebody stop the bus so I can get off? What a journey. How's your journey going? How is your journey going? Each one of you today brings your journey here to this moment. How's your journey going? Where have you come from? We could talk about that for a long time. Where have we come from? And where are we going? I, I like to talk about that. Uh, that's a good one to talk about it, right? But maybe more important than any other question is, who is with you on your journey? Amen. What a journey this life is. You know, I lived in Minnesota. I've said that a lot. And if you've lived in Minnesota, you have snow stories. Or if you've lived in the Dakotas or up north or I grew up in the Midwest, snow stories. I want to tell you one of many Minnesota snow stories. Think about Minnesota. When it snows, the snow doesn't go anywhere because it's below 30 degrees for like six months. And then we have a week of summer, and then fall comes. <laughs> and uh, so it piles up, and it gets icy, and then it snows. And one of the usual days, it was snowing. We had to go pick up our daughter at the airport, which was about 45 minutes from the academy. And we headed out to Minneapolis. It was snowing. The roads were icy. It took us three hours to get to the airport. Maybe some of you have experienced that. I was clutching the wheel. I was bent up. I was, I was watching cars go into the ditch, into the ditch. And then you got those cars coming at you. Oh, those trucks are coming at you. And you're just going along. Well, we got to the airport. Three hours to get home. So it took us almost six hours. It was dark. That's really fun. When it's dark, it's snowing, there's ice, and crazy people on the road. If I was the only one on the road, I'd, I'd be okay. Got home. We were so happy to be home. The next morning, I got up, put one of my socks on, and crunch my back just slipped out from the tension of being so concentrated on that trip. How is your journey going? I want to talk to you from my heart to your heart today, and I want to make this very, very personal. You know, when we stand up here as pastors, we see you. I see my former teachers. I see neighbors. I see friends. I see you. You know, if you're laughing, if you're talking, you know who we really see? The people that are sleeping. <laughs> and I remember when I was a young pastor, the one that really got me was the people laughing when I wasn't trying to be funny. I always wondered, where were they? But I want to make this very personal because we, we as pastors here, we see most of you. We don't see you all, but we see most of you. We know your stories. 
you allow us to come into your lives at certain times of pain, of illness, of sickness, of death. There's faces that I don't see here anymore. Robin, I miss your mom. I'm, I, I could always see her, and she was zoned in, and she was amen, amening. I miss your mom. And this week, a friend of ours, um, Dora Perez, and Renee Perez, who passed away a year ago, they used to sit in the second or third row here all the time. And my wife knew her since she was a little girl. My wife was a little girl in Puerto Rico. So you're personal to us. When we talk, we know a lot of your stories. I'm going to tell you a story quick about my dad. Did, did not put this in the other sermons. I can go as long as I want, Patty told me, because it's third service. She's waving at me you now. I remember when I was a boy, my dad got up in front of a church that will remain nameless, and he looked out at the congregation, and he started crying because he knew this person's pain, and he knew this person's loss, and he knew this story here, and he started crying, and there were some people that didn't think he was fit to be a minister if he would cry in the pulpit. So he was not allowed to preach for a year until he pulled himself together. So I know you would let me cry if I wanted to. I know that. But what I'm trying to tell you is that we as pastors are very invested in your stories, in your loss, in your pain. I want to let you in on, on my story a little too. So I'm going to tell you the places that I have lived in my life. Born in Ohio, first six years of my life in Ohio. My dad was a pastor. We moved to Delaware for one year. And if you're, pa if you're a pastor and you go someplace for one year, there's a longer story, but I'm not going to tell you that story today. And then we moved to Pennsylvania, Shirley, Philadelphia. Shirley was my brother's teacher in like second grade. And we had five great years in Philadelphia. I call those the Greater Philadelphia Junior Academy years. Then we went back to Ohio, Spring Valley Academy for seven years. Then Berrien Springs, Michigan. Who spent time in Berrien Springs, Michigan? Six years in Berrien. The Kidders, I know the Kidders were friends with my dad, went to school with him. So there's a connection, Barry and Andrews. Met my wife at Andrews, yay for Adventist education. Did a year pastoring in Indiana, and before you judge me, I interned a year. So that's what interns do. That's the end of the story. And then my wife and I, we moved to Puerto Rico for 16 years in the Caribbean. We were in education for 16 years, and then my wife will forever love me for taking her to Minnesota <laughs> from Puerto Rico. We like to say that we're on a cold, hot, cold, hot treatment program. We were in Michigan. We went to Puerto Rico. We went to Minnesota. We're in Florida. My wife says there are no more cold treatments. This is it. <laughs> we're done. So we've been here in Florida for seven years, and I think back to all the fun places I've met, all the people I've and there's a lot of you from along the way there that are here now. How cool is that, that we're here together? I'm going to tell you an Andrew story. I have lots of Andrew stories, but I'm going to tell you a, a brief one. For those of you that went to Andrews, went to Berrien Springs, you know how the campus is laid out. You know they have a lot of snow off the lake, and one Friday night, classes were over, Todd, and, and and it was just had gotten dark, and it was that nice snow, and everybody was off campus. They were either in the dorms getting ready for worship, or and I went for a walk. Nobody on campus. It was just quiet, and the snow was coming down, and they have those long sidewalks that go from, like, the music room all the way down to Pioneer Memorial. It, it's a long, long sidewalk. I was walking down that, and I stopped, and I looked back, and I could see my footprints in the snow, only my footprints in the snow. I looked ahead, not knowing there's no footprints there. And I was just thinking, you know, where's my life going to go? Who am I going to wind up marrying? What is God going to do with my life? Just that point of where we look back. Do you look back at your life? Do you look back at those footprints in the snow and then look ahead and wonder where you're going? Speaking of going, 
My wife and I have been married 29 years, and we've moved 10 times. So we're averaging 2.9 years. It's going to be easy next year to be 30 years, 10 years, 3 years. We can do it. But we did Berrien Springs to Chicago. Okay. We did Chicago to Puerto Rico. And I did all the packing for that because she was pregnant with our first child. And so I did all the, the tape. Chicago to Puerto Rico. I'm going to get her back, though. Uh, when we went, we moved three times in Puerto Rico. Every time we moved, we had a kid. I said, we've got to stop moving. <laughs> this has got to stop. Every time we moved, we had a child. So we moved three times. We have three children, all born in Puerto Rico. We moved to, from Puerto Rico to Minnesota. And here, you remember I packed, I did all the packing from Chicago to Puerto Rico. When I got the job in Minnesota, they wanted me to get there in two days. So I did something that I don't advise you to do too often. I left my wife to do all the packing <laughs> on an overseas pack. So we moved in Minnesota a couple times, and in Florida we've moved two times. We laugh about it, but think about, think about all the places you've been, all that journey, that process of moving. So I said, as I told you earlier, we as pastors here at Port Forest Lake Church, we are aware of many of your stories. And I apologize to any of you who we don't know your story. We wish we could know everybody's story. We try. But there are so many stories we don't know. But each one of you, each one of us, we have a story. You're here today with a story in process. And everyone, this is a cliche, you've heard it, everyone you meet has a story, is on a journey. Now, I love to walk at the mall. Take the, since I took the um, Diabetes Undone class and learned that I need to walk after my meals, I try to do at least a half an hour at the mall. It's inside, no dogs. There's a lot of church members in the mall, I'll tell you that. You know who you are. And they usually don't notice me because I'm in shorts and a Cubs hat. And they just, I've had people walk right by me. Walking at the mall, you see a lot of people. You see a lot of faces. You see people in wheelchairs. You see young mothers with three or four kids. You see grandparents with kids. You see people with faces, maybe they're a little too happy. I'm not sure what they're so happy. And you see faces you see faces where people are stressed out. I saw the people, the faces in line for the iPhone 10 waiting three hours. I said, I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not in that line. I'm iPhone 6. I use my phone to call people. That works. But you see all these people with stories, and you wonder where they're going in their lives. My great-grandparents came from Czechoslovakia and Romania. My great-grandparents, John and Pauline Euskert, moved to Chicago. My great-grandmother, Pauline, did not speak any English. Great place to go, Chicago. Nice little American city. They had four little children under the age of six. My great-grandfather, John Euskert, had a store, and it was payday, and they were putting the payroll together and somebody robbed them. But not only did somebody rob them, somebody murdered them and burned the store down. My great-great-grandfather. My great-grandmother, Pauline Euskert, is in America, doesn't speak English, has four little kids. What a journey. I met her one time. Remember, she grabbed my cheeks and she was like, Stevie, 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 like 95. She worked as a janitor in the public school full-time all of her life to raise those kids. What a journey, I think, that was that she went on. So my grandpa, Steve Euskert, her son, who I'm named after, my grandpa and grandma are buried over here at Highland Memorial, like a lot of our friends and loved ones are. 
I went on a trip with him in 1986 back to Chicago. He wanted to, he had moved to Florida. They lived here for 20 years. He wanted to go back. He had not been in Chicago for 20 years. He walks into a McDonald's and somebody says, hey, Steve, how you doing? Somebody recognized him like that. He wanted to go back to where he worked, which was Crown Point uh, Jail in Crown Point, Indiana. It's very famous. That's the, the jail that John Dillinger escaped from, if you've heard of John Dillinger. And he wanted to go back. And we went back, and the roof was out, and water was leaking in, and the doors were out. They had let it go into disrepair. He went over on a desk. He picked up a piece of paper, and it said, Patrolman Steve Uskert, with a date on it. I mean, how crazy is that, 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 that his name was on a piece of paper? And then the final thing he wanted to do was go to his father's grave, who I told you about, John, who he had never known. He was six months old when his father was murdered. And I watched my grandpa go to that grave. I'd never seen my grandpa cry, and I watched him cry like a baby over the grave of a father that he had never known. So that's just part little bits and pieces of, of my journey. How's your journey going? Where does it begin? Well, I'm going to propose something to you. I really like this, and I get it from Scripture. Where does our journey begin? Jeremiah 1.5 tells us, Before I formed you, what? In the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nation. So I propose to all of us that our journey begins, fasten your seatbelts, in the mind of God. You were thought of in the mind of God before you are formed in the womb. So then we go on this crazy journey. I'm not going to go into the details. Conception, okay? We'll just go by that quick. Birth, childhood. Not everyone gets past these stages. A lot of people don't get past them. I mean, we, conception, birth, childhood, elementary school, youth, high school, work, job. Some go to college. Some go to university. We go into young adulthood. Some of us get married, married, some of us are single, some of us becomes parents. What a journey. We're not going to talk about that long, parenthood. What a journey. And let me give you a warning, you with little children, get ready for when you have adult children. What a journey. So we have parenthood, we have middle age, yay. We have senior age, we have retirement. And then at some point, we face together the harsh reality of death. It's part of the process. And let me propose to you that when we die, I believe we'll return where we started to the mind of God. We are in His memory. We know the state of the dead. We're sleeping. The dead know nothing. God never forgets those who sleep in him. And my grandpa Steve used to say, you're never really dead until everybody who's alive forgets about you. There comes a point that the only person who remembers you is God. But that's enough, isn't it? So you, we start in the mind of God. We may end in the mind of God. What a journey in between. Here you go, Joan. I see one of my teachers, Joan. One question that a lot of people ask me, what's the biggest difference between being a principal and a pastor? And I'll tell you, the biggest difference is the amount of suffering, pain, illness, and death that I'm exposed to as a pastor. That's the biggest difference. And it happens more regularly than we would like to think. The biggest difference that I, is that I'm very aware that we, your pastors, we are aware of your pain, of your suffering, of your illnesses, of your facing death. There are people watching today that are sick at home or in the hospital or can't make it here. You are not forgotten. 
We do not forget you. We pray for you. And God does not forget you. You are in his mind and in his thoughts as you're going down that journey of illness. Let you into my personal life a little. My dad had open heart surgery when he was 42 years old. And he had three other open heart surgeries during his lifetime. And we spent 25 years, and I admit it, I, every time we went golfing, I was afraid he was going to have a heart incident on the golf course. Well, it wound up, what he ran into was leukemia at 66. And we spent, and it's sort of human nature, natural, we spent those 25 years concerned for heart issues, and heart issues were never, never the issue. When you lose a parent, when you lose a loved one, it's a tough journey. And there are many of you here today, I know you, I'm not going to call you out by names. You're sitting here without your spouse. God sees you. We see you. You're not forgotten. So many times as pastors, you invite us into your lives to walk this journey. You allow us to walk along with you. We can't be with you all the time. We would like to be with you all the time. But I will tell you this, Jesus walks with you every step of the way. You may feel alone. I felt alone. You may feel that nobody notices you. You're, you are not alone. Jesus walks with you on this journey every moment of every day. Okay. Real quick, Joseph. Not going to give you the details, but what a roller coaster, the life of Joseph. Born in privilege. We're going to do like Sesame Street. We're going to, the letter of the day is P. Privilege. He was born in privilege. He got thrown in a pit. He wound up in Potiphar's house. The problem with Potiphar's house is Potiphar had a spouse. He went from Potiphar's house to prison. Ellen White tells us he spent 10 years in prison. You know, the story in the Bible is 10 years in Egyptian prison. He's in prison. He goes to Pharaoh. Sounds like an F, but it's a P, trust me. He goes to Pharaoh. And like most people in life, okay, he's up, he's down, he's up, he's down, he's up, he's down. He's up, but then he perishes. He passes away. But before he passes away, and I forgot this P in my other two, he had a promise. He had a promise. Genesis 5, 24 through 26. I'm going to read it a little quick. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land. Who's ready to go out of this land? I'm ready to go out of this land. Bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So on that journey, so Joseph died. My dad died. Many of you have had loved ones die. So Joseph died being 110. And they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Is that the end of his journey? No, no, no. Exodus 13, 19. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had placed the children of Israel under a solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. Are we done? We're not done. Hebrews 11. If you're ever down, go to Hebrews 11. A lot of people with down arrows by faith go up. By faith, 11.22. Hebrews 11.22. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. He wanted to go with them. 
He knew the promise. Even though I'm dead, take my bones with you. So here's his final up arrow. Hebrews 11, 13 through 16. These all died in what? Faith. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them. Are you assured today? Are you certain? Are you confident? Embrace them. Embrace those promises. And confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. I'm old enough to remember John Wayne. Where are you going, pilgrim? Remember that? Pilgrims on the earth. You and I are pilgrims. We're on a journey from here to there. Pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But here we go. You and I, all of them, by faith, Hebrews 11. But now they desire a better, that is, heavenly country. That's where we're going. No matter what those footprints are in the snow, no matter how many down arrows you've got, you've got a big up arrow coming. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them with electricity, with running water, with fresh air, with every need and care you would need. What a journey the life of Moses. What a journey your life. Huh, Irene? What a journey, Todd. What a, what a journey. What a journey the life we go on. So many ups and downs. Are you up today, down today? Real quick, I've got to say it. What a journey Jesus took for us. Talk about being in privilege and coming into a pit. You're king of the universe. The next thing, you're born with animals in a stall. You're a human being. And he, didn't, he wasn't born into a palace. He was born into poverty. He lived his life here. Boy, did he have up and down arrows? Oh, he did. Yes, he did. Can't get much worse than death on a cross. I mean, I understand coming and dying for us. But the way he died, I mean, he went the ultimate road of suffering for us so that we could have life eternal. Talk about a big up arrow, resurrection. Does that get you excited? You have loved ones that you're excited to see? This Highland Memorial is going to be a jumping spot over here when Jesus comes. Because someday he, he will return as our king and take us on a journey up. So we move forward on our journey. We travel knowing that Jesus is with us and leading us every step of the way. Here's what I want you to take away. You never walk alone. Jesus is always with you. Always with you. Always with us. Always. What a journey. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we all are on this incredible journey of life. You've given us many stories in the Bible and also many witnesses from people in our lives. Think of my great-grandparents, grandparents, my parents. All of us have our families and stories. And here we are as a church on a journey, as a country on a journey. We pray for those in the parts of the world that are really suffering today. May we do something to reach out and help them. But we walk by faith, looking for a better country, knowing that you always lead us and walk with us and are with us on our journey. Amen.